This video is all about the order of operations. It's lesson 4a. We have to do more than one calculation when we do multi-step problems, and that's what this lesson's all about. Lesson 4 is all about multi-step problems. They can have more than one type of operation. Some of the questions on the GED math test will ask us to identify and choose the equation that fits the problem. So it'll have five different choices and ask you which of these problems, which of these equations would solve this problem. And you have to figure out the wording and which equation is correct. And some of them will just want us to find the answer. Well, either way, we need to know how to write and evaluate mathematical expressions that have more than one operation. Now, mathematicians have agreed on an order of operations to solve equations. They had to. And depending on the order, we can get different answers. So a standard rule was needed to be followed to avoid confusion and keep math consistent no matter who was doing the calculations. One guy in one country could say, well, I'm going to do it this way. And another guy in another country could say, well, I'm going to do it this way. And they would get two different answers. And it was just chaos. By having the order of operations, everyone said, OK, there's a standard rule we're going to follow that if this is what the math equation looks like or the signs that we're using and the order they're in, this is how it's going to be solved and that'll be considered the right answer. Okay, so let me show you. Some of you might be familiar with this already. It's parentheses, then exponents, then we multiply and divide from left to right. So if the division sign is first and then the multiplication sign from left to right, we would divide first. It's left to right, whichever comes first. Then we add or subtract from left to right, whichever comes first. So these are kind of grouped together, and these are kind of grouped together, whichever comes first, left to right, OK? But parentheses are always first, and exponents are always next. If they don't have parentheses or exponents, you go and skip whatever it doesn't have and go to the next order in the list, OK? So take a look at this. We have 4 times 2 plus 3. If we follow the order of operations, it says we multiply and then add. So we would do 4 times 2 is 8 plus the 3. That would give us an 11, right? Well, what if we didn't follow the order and we added the 2 plus 3 first? We would get a 5. Then when we multiply it by 4, we're going to get a 20. So this is not correct. This is not the right answer because it's not following the order of operations. This one is this is the correct way to do it. There's no parentheses. There's no exponents. So we're going to multiply, get our answer, and then we're going to add, and we get an 11, OK? Now, if there was parentheses, we would say, OK, we're going to do inside the parentheses first. That's an 8, and then we add the 3. That's an 11. And that makes it a lot easier because we know what order to do it in. We do the parentheses first. If there were parentheses around the 2 plus 3, we would do it first because parentheses come first. And they can help clear up any confusion because we always do them first. If there aren't any parentheses, just follow PEMDAS starting with the E. Do the exponents multiply or divide, add or subtract? OK, so the best way to remember this is it's not multiply and divide. It's multiply or divide left to right add or subtract left to right, whichever comes first, OK? If there's no parentheses, this would be the correct order. We're going to divide. There's no multiplication, so we're not going to do that. Well, look, let's start from the beginning. There's no parentheses, OK? There's no exponents, OK? There's no multiplication, OK? But there is division. So we're going to do this division first, and 6 divided by 2 is a 3. Then we add and subtract going from left to right in that direction. So we would do this division first. That's a 3. Then we'd add the 10. That gives us a 13. And now we subtract the 1, and that gives us a 12. If there were parentheses, then we would do inside of here first and do 10 plus 6 is 16. Then we would do exponents, but there aren't any, multiplication, but there isn't any, so we skip to division. 16 divided by 2 is an 8. Now we subtract the 1 and get the 7. But see, that's because those were in parentheses. Two sets of parentheses, and this would be the correct order. You could start with either parentheses. 10 plus 6 is 16. 2 minus 1 is 1. 16 divided, see that's in between it, by 1, 
That gives us 16. So look, depending on if there were no parentheses, parentheses, or two sets of parentheses, we got three different answers. Okay? That's why it's so important to follow the rule. Look at here's no parentheses just going left to right, and we do 10 plus 6 is 16 divided by 2, which is 8 minus 1 is 7. See? And it was basically the same thing as this one, but this one just happened to have the parentheses up front, and that's why it became a 7. You can't just go straight across and know that you're going to get the right answer. You have to follow the order, okay? And the commutative property of multiplication says that we can multiply in any order and get the same answer. 2 times 4 equals 8, and 4 times 2 equals 8. And the commutative property of addition says that we can add numbers in any order and get the same answer. 2 plus 3 is 5, 3 plus 2 is 5. Okay? So we can switch them around to make our life easy. Now check this out. I actually have this on my Facebook page as one of my posts. 4 times 4 plus 4 plus, and then in parentheses, 4 times 4 divided by 4 plus 40. Isn't that crazy? Well, we're going to do in parentheses first. Starting with, there's no exponents, so we're going to do the multiplication, and 4 times 4 is 16, and we're going to do the division, 16 divided by 4 is a 4, and now we're going to do the addition inside the parentheses, the 40. So we have 44 on this side in the parentheses. We set this number aside, and now we work on what was not in the parentheses. Here's multiplication, so we're going to do that before the addition, so we get 4 times 4 is 16, plus this 4 is a 20. Now, we, we're going to do that addition symbol. We have 20 plus the 44, we get 64. So if you're following my Facebook page, I put silly posts and educational posts and funny signs and stuff like that. So if you want, look for Joanne's School on Facebook and follow me. And I actually do little educational or funny things every day. All right, check this one out. It says multiply the sum of 5 and 4 by the sum of 3 and 2. So we need to break this down. We need to figure out which equation fits this. So if we're multiplying the sum of 5 and 4, let's set this multiply aside for right now. Let's just look at the sum of 5 and 4. Well, sum is the answer in an addition problem. So that means 5 plus 4 and the sum of 3 and 2 would be 3 plus 2. And it says to multiply that sum by that sum. So we're going to do 5 plus 4 times 3 plus 2. And that would be the correct equation. 5 plus 4 is 9 times 3 plus 2 is 5. We'd get 45. See? You just have to break it down, read it a couple times, and go slow. Okay? It says subtract 15 from 25, then divide by 2. Well, if we're going to subtract 15 from 25, that... The 15 is coming from the 25, so that means we have 25 minus 15. See? When the 15 is the subtrahend, then we're taking it away from 25, the minuend. See that? So that has to be switched around in the subtraction problem. And it says then divide by 2. So we could put these in parentheses to do first and then divide it by 2. See? That would be a 10 divided by 2. That would give us a 5. Okay? This one says, add the product of 7 and 7 to the sum of 2 and 4. So we're going to have this in parentheses, and we're going to have this in parentheses, and we're going to have an addition sign in between them. The product of 7 and 7 is 7 times 7 is 49, and the sum of 2 and 4 is a 6. We're going to add these two together, so we have two sets of parentheses, we add 49 plus 6, and we get 55. See? All right, take a look at these. Knowing the associative property of multiplication can help us. If we have 19 times 4 times 25, we can use the associative property. It's called the grouping property. And we can just regroup and put the parentheses in a different place. Instead of being around the 19 and the 4, we could put it around the 4 and the 25 because that's more compatible. That's like four quarters and a dollar, isn't it? Doing it this way, we would have to get our calculator and do 19 times 4, and then we'd have to multiply it by 25. But if we regroup this, we get 100 times 19. That's 1,900. Some of you can do that in your head without the calculator. Okay? So the associative property, that grouping property, can help us. 
the associative property of addition can do the same thing. If we have 9 plus 6 plus 4, we could just regroup this with the 6 and the 4. They're more compatible. They make a 10. We get 10 plus 9. That's 19. That's a lot easier to do mental math. We just identify, look, there's a 6 and a 4 here. They're all addition, so it doesn't matter which order we add it in or how we group it. See? The, asso the associative property is a grouping property that says that we can regroup compatible numbers. So the PEMDAS, the Please Excuse My Dear Aunt Sally, you could make up your own. You could put Put Ed's money down and scram. Purple eggs make darn awful soup. Pat eats my donuts and soda. So the please excuse my dear Aunt Sally, you could use that or just make up your own. Just remember it. You don't want to be in the middle of the test and say, I forgot my little saying. So if, you're, if you make a funny one, write it down a few times, put it in your folder so you can remember it, or just use please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. I've said this before, I'll say it again, people have been using this for over a hundred years, this please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. They've been using it over a hundred years doing math and order of operations. And I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but it's been a long time and she hasn't been excused yet, okay? Just remember that order. Now, I'm putting so much at your fingertips to help you. This guy is standing on a stack full of ladders and he can't make it over the wall. And it says, it doesn't matter how many resources you have, if you don't know how to use them, it'll never be enough. Or if you decide not to use them. So I'm really helping you. I'm giving you these videos. I'm giving you links to easier videos. So if you need more help, there's a grade three math, several grade three math videos, 1.1, 1.5, 3.6, 4.6, 7.11. Grade 4 math, there's two videos. Grade 5 math, there's two videos. Grade 6 math, there's a video. And I might have explained this order of operations and these properties, associative and commutative properties, a little bit differently. Who knows? And if you're having trouble grasping this and you don't get it 100%, try watching the videos that are linked in this description to help yourself. Start climbing that ladder instead of standing on it sideways, right? Our next video is solving multi-step problems. It's going to be lesson 4B. And I hope I'll see you there. And don't feel upset if you're doing some of these lessons and some of them take longer than others. It doesn't matter. You're going to go faster in some of these lessons than others because you're going to remember stuff you learned in school. And it'll just come to you real quick. So... Don't worry if you go fast and slow and fast and slow, as long as you keep going one foot in front of the other and are making progress and you're better than you were yesterday, okay? My little card. Try to be better than you were yesterday and you'll be fine, okay? All right. I'll see you next video. Have a great day. Bye.